Hello and welcome to EMS for SOLIDWORKS. In this video, we will be studying a magnetic arrangement and see what are the forces acting on a moving magnet as it passes through this arrangement. Let us now look at the model. So if you notice here, there are several magnets that are arranged at an angle to each other. I'm going to go ahead and hide the air geometry so you can see them. So these magnets that I highlight, they are all permanent magnets and they are all arranged at an angle as you see here. There is also another moving magnet that will go through this magnetic arrangement and we will see in this simulation example the forces that act on the moving magnet. To do the simulation in EMS, which is an add-in product to SOLIDWORKS, we have to go to the EMS Manager tab. And in the EMS Manager tab, I've got a couple of simulation studies already done and I'll walk you through the steps. The first step in creating any EMS study is to create a simulation study. Now I have a simulation study titled Initial Position and in this study I'm going to study the forces acting on this moving magnet when it is in its initial position. There is no movement in this particular simulation. We are just going to study a static position and what forces act on this moving magnet. Notice here these arrows kind of tell you the magnetic direction of all these other magnets. The north-south is clearly indicated by the arrow. Once you create a study, EMS allows you to define the materials for various components in your study. For example, each of these magnets are made of neodymium N42 and EMS comes with its own material library which allows users to select materials from its library. For example, it has a library of permanent magnets and inside the permanent magnets there are neodymium based magnets. It also has libraries from various manufacturers like Arnold where they have a list of their neodymium iron boron magnet grades. So one can actually select the material from the EMS material library. One could also create their own materials in EMS. EMS allows you to have a user defined material library. Let's look at the various materials. The magnets are made of N42 and then the plastic casing surrounding the magnets highlighted in blue now is made of nylon and everything else is made of air. We need to create air geometry to do any simulation in EMS and that's because the magnetic field propagates through air and it's important to capture that in your simulation. Once the materials are done, next we will have to assign the direction of the magnet. Now direction of the magnet I'm going to just show you for one particular magnet and it's very simple. First of all, you do that by assigning what is called as a coercivity direction. Now EMS allows you to select any coordinate system to assign the direction for the magnet. Here I'm using a local coordinate system that I defined in SOLIDWORKS where the x-axis of this local coordinate system is the direction where we want the magnet direction to be. So we select that local coordinate system and then we can select Cartesian cylindrical or spherical. In this case, we are using a Cartesian coordinate system and we are activating the direction of the magnet along the X axis. And you can also see the symbols when you hit the show preview button and then you're able to see the magnet direction for each of the magnets. Finally, the moving magnet also has a direction here 
and it's also denoted by the symbol here. Once the magnet directions are defined, next we request the EMS program to compute the force acting on this moving magnet. And the method that we use to compute the force is called as virtual work. Now once a simulation study is defined, you can go ahead and run the simulation. I've already run the simulation, so we can take a look directly at the results. Now let me go ahead and show the outer air geometry as well so that it will be easy for us to visualize the results. The first result that we will be looking at will be the force value. Remember that we requested the program to compute the force acting on this moving magnet at this initial starting position. Most of the force is going to be along the z-axis, the SOLIDWORKS global coordinate system z-axis and that value is given here to be about minus 2 newtons. So the starting force along the z-axis is going to be minus 2 newtons. This is the force acting on the moving magnet along the z-axis. Now the magnet is constrained in such a way that the motion is possible only along the z-axis. So that's the force that we are interested in. There may be other forces acting on the magnets, but those are forces that can be constrained uh, and the movement can be constrained. So these forces, although might be important mechanically, they are not really relevant to the study. Nevertheless, EMS gives you all the three values, X, Y and Z values of the forces. Basically, there's also a large Y force here, which makes the magnet move um, out of the plane in which it's there. So that's due to the arrangement of the different magnets and also the position. Next, we will do a simulation that is tied with motion. To do that, we can create a magnetic simulation and we can couple that with a motion study. To do a motion study, we can couple EMS to any SOLIDWORKS motion simulation. We can tell the program the component that moves, in this case the moving magnet, and also the geometry inside which the magnet moves, also known as the band in EMS terminology. Once you define a motion study and link it with EMS, the steps remain the same. We define the materials as before. After that, we also define the directions of the magnets. And finally, we request the program to compute the force acting on the moving magnet. Now, this particular force is now linked back to motion simulation. As you can see here, the force is coupled to a force in the motion simulation. I will walk you through next the motion study so it will become clear. Now the motion study is accomplished using SOLIDWORKS motion. In SOLIDWORKS motion, we can set either a motor to drive a particular component and we can also associate forces coming from electromagnetics. In this particular example, I have a linear motor which is used to drive this moving magnet at a constant velocity. Next, I also have a force which is actually a dummy force acting on the moving magnet. Its value is zero newtons. But what it really means is that the real value of the force comes from EMS simulation. Now I have the study done and the simulation results are there with me. So let me go ahead and walk you through some of the simulation results. First, let us look at the qualitative results. Let's look at, for example, the magnetic flux density plot as vectors coming from the 
magnet you can see here the value of the magnetic flux density on a particular plane shown as vectors now i have several different vector options for me to turn on insignificant value vectors for example i can turn this on so that now you have a clear picture of the magnetic field lines and how the different magnets and the magnetic flux originating from the different magnets interact with each other okay. next let us look at the result table as before now in this particular result table we can study several different aspects now for example we will first study the force acting on the moving magnet you can notice that the force acting on the moving magnet is kind of periodic and it also tends to be mostly positive along the z axis which tells you that the moving magnet tends to accelerate forward when it goes through this arrangement next we can take a look at a very interesting uh, quantity called the power consumption this is the power consumption of the motor that is used to push the magnet at a constant velocity notice that in the initially you need to supply some power to accelerate this magnet through the arrangement of other magnets but as the magnet gets moving you can becomes negative what it really means is that moving magnet system is actually producing power on other ways this also tells you that the system is accelerating thus we have seen how ems can actually help you study magnetic systems and the motion of magnets and other components through an arrangement of permanent magnets last but not the least we can also get uh, things like a section plot uh, let's first uh, take a look at um, the magnetic flux density at any particular step and then this particular plot i can do a section plot to understand what would be the magnetic flux density i can choose the appropriate plane for my section and you can study the magnetic flux density let me just go ahead and make the section right at the middle and this is the magnetic flux density as a section plot you can see these red values showing high values of magnetic flux through the magnets and the blue values so showing low values of the magnetic flux one can choose to um, see these uh, values in a logarithmic scale so that you can get a better picture sometimes these low values get hidden and they can be brought out if you can plot the same thing in the logarithmic scale and i can also finally because this is a coupled motion simulation i can animate the motion of the magnet through the arrangement and you will see the animation shortly here you can see the magnet moving at a constant speed through the arrangement of magnets and you can see how the different flux magnetic flux density interacts with the arrangement of these permanent magnets as the moving magnet enters its flux region